Welcome to the Refuse Ordinary podcast. I'm your host, Tamara, and I'm so glad you've decided to join us on this journey of discovering who God is and who we are in Him. We are so excited to share with you today another class from our full-time School of Transformation. So today we're talking about the Trinity. And when I talk about the Trinity, it's not a person named Trinity, and it's not a church down the road that's called Trinity. The Trinity is what we we serve a God that is a triune God. Does anybody know what that word means, triune? Three parts. Three parts. Three parts, one thing. Right? A lot of people like to say like uh, an egg is a three in one. Right? You got the shell, you got the shell, you got the yolk, and you got the white. One thing. It's called an egg, but it's got three parts. All right, I'm not referring to God as an egg, but it's just a visual to kind of understand that like there, God is, is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So it's a very complicated thing, but broken down, when you think about it, it's not that really that hard of a concept. So in this lesson, we're going to learn about the Trinity, how it works, God, and how God reveals Himself to us as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, yet they're one. So we're going to read, we're going to bounce around in John today. So if you want to pull out your Bibles, we're going to be in John 14. I always like pointing this out, but here, even in Genesis, in the in the in Genesis 1, 1, 1, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And then I always skip over this until someone pointed it out. It says, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So you have God and the Spirit of God hovering over the waters. So that that tells us there's at least two parts already, right? There's two people that are are in this. And then we have the the person of Jesus in the Gospels. So there we have have God in the flesh as the Son. We have God that talks to Jesus in the cloud. And we have the Holy Spirit. He gives a He gives the disciples the Holy Spirit in the Book of Acts. Let's go to Let's go to uh, fourteen. Let's go to verse five. It says uh, John fourteen five it says Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father, which is God except through me, who is Jesus, in the flesh. He says, if you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you don't. You do know him, and you have seen him. So we have seen the Father if we have seen the person of Jesus. And skip down to verse 15. It says, if you love me, you will obey what I command, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit. The world cannot accept Him because it neither sees Him nor knows Him, but you know Him. Uh, and you will, uh, and uh, for He lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you before long. The world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On the day you will realize that I am in the Father. So Jesus is in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever uh, whoever has my commands and, and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. Going on, it says, if any uh, in twenty three, it says, if anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and he will come. We will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own; they belong to the Father who sent me. All this have I spoken while uh, while still with you. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything. I have said to you. 
Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives, but do not let your, heart, uh, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Um, or else do I want to keep going? The vine and the branches is an amazing uh, illustration of that as well, of, of us being in the Father and the Father being in Jesus. Why, why is this important for us? Why is it important to know that we serve a trying God? Why, why is that even relevant? To, like, why do we care? In my personal opinion, I think it's for, for this. Oop. So the root word of community is what? Commune, oops. So we're it, so there's three different parts of God. So if the if we have the Father, we have the Son, and the Holy Spirit, every different every as, every different aspect of God has a has different traits, has different things, and they make up the one thing. So there's the masculine side of God. People have heard that. We've heard that their oh, God has masculine features. He also has feminine features. Jesus has uh, qualities. We're going to do in inner healing. We'll do this thing called the Father Ladder. I'll give you a little sneak peek to the sneak peek to the Father Ladder. But then we have uh, we have God, the Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, and then we have Dad brothers or siblings let me write that siblings slash peers mom and in each one of these are different traits of identity that that this is supposed to correlate with that these are supposed to correlate with and it, it's not the end-all, be-all. Like, it's not like just because I wrote the tic-tac-toe board up here and, and put this in there doesn't mean that they can't cross. Does that make sense? But this is just a good reference point of saying like, hey, how do I, how do I, how do I have commune, com commune with my dad? How do I commune with my mom and my peers? And what are these different things? And so some of these things are like protection, identity, uh, uh, provision. Oh man, I'm trying to do this off the top of my head. Holy Spirit, help me. Uh, nurture, love. Kind of teaching. Gosh, I can't remember any of the ones for Jesus. Um, but it's important to know that, like Jesus, has he the way that we have this. Jesus has this with all of them as well. He says, "I only do what I see my Father doing. I only say what I see my Father or say what my Father is saying." And so, knowing this. So knowing this can help us have intimacy within the Trinity. Intim how do I connect with the Holy Spirit? How do I connect with the Father? How do I connect with the Holy Spirit? Who would you how, raise your hand if you say it's really easy for you to connect with the Holy Spirit? Really easy. What what about Jesus? Raise your hand. Anybody? What? Like, if you to, like, experience Jesus, is it easy for you to talk to Jesus? Can you hear Jesus' voice? Can you hear God's voice? Yeah. I would say so. Or would you say it's it's hard all the way across the board? No, it's not. It's not? Well, that's good. Well, what's the easiest one to connect for you? Um, to hear Him. So, what, 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 God, the Father, Jesus, or the Holy Spirit, which one do you think is the easiest one for you to connect with? Jesus. Why? Um... We're kind of dabbling into an inner healing topic this morning. I would say, 
uh, not probably not everybody, but the father is probably the hardest one for us all to like think about connection with or intimacy with. Why do I say that? I'm not going to say that everybody had a bad father or everybody has terrible connections with fathers, but it just seems like, to me anyways, it seems like the father was always this thing that was like distant and far off. Mm -hmm. Like God is like up in the clouds or God is far away as this ruler and this uh, supreme tough, like not that he's bad, not that he's bad at all, but that he was just like somebody that was like, I'm going to send Jesus to deal with you because I'm over here. And then it's like sometimes like the person of Jesus, it's hard for us to connect with a person. So then it's like, I feel I felt like for me, I had a really good relationship with my mom. I felt like she did the best that she could from my experience. And so I felt like when I heard of the Holy Spirit or I'd feel and worship the presence or something, I felt like it was the easiest for me to connect with the Holy Spirit, to feel something, to, to feel love. But it's like, to, to think of God, the Father, it was always this thing that was really far off or like up, up far away. Even in, in my inner healings, it was always Jesus, always. And there's nothing wrong with Jesus. There's not, not at all. But Jesus just said, the only way to the Father is, is through me. And so if I want to connect with the Father, I have to connect with Jesus. But if I'm only connecting with the Holy Spirit, I have to ask myself, why? Why am I not connecting with the Father? What is What filter is in the way that's stopping me from having a relationship with God the Father or having a conversation with God the Father? Because He's a Father. Because that word, Father, attached to it has some sort of earthly meaning for us. Absent-minded, gone, Really good. Uh, and you can have different relationships with the same person of the Godhead. So it's like, in, in my opinion, for me and Lisa, it was really easy for me to know that God was just going to provide money. Because He always bought stuff for us. Yeah. He always provided things for us. And so I just didn't have any problem trusting that God was going to come through. I don't know how, like, I just was like, oh, like, let's pray for a Subaru. And for some reason, I just knew we would get a Subaru. I just knew that, like, we would have nice things. Like, in, in my past life, or my old life, I would say that that was, like, what do you call that? Like, the power, the power of positive thinking, right? You would manifest things into your life. Just think about it enough and talk about it enough and poof, there it is. But really what that is, is, the, is God, the Father, coming in and saying, I see the desires of your heart. Not that you want a Subaru and I'm just going to bless you with the Subaru, but because we were faithful with the things that got us to that point. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I mean by that is we had two cars that were given to us, and I'm not trying to be ungrateful, but they weren't the best cars. Mm -hmm. But they were free, and they drove from point A to point B. But when we had a baby... And it's 110 outside in Orville, and the air conditioner doesn't work in it, and our kid looks like he's going to die. Mm -hmm. We were like, Lord, we would really love a new car. Mm -hmm. And instead of saying a new car, like we heard, like Lisa's relationship with God, her, her developed relationship with God was like, hey, God says we need to be specific. He wants to know what you want. He wants to know specifically and that, and why does he want to know specifically because he wants to talk to us he wants to commune with us he wants to have community with us he has communion within his self jesus and the father and the holy spirit have communion within themselves and we have to learn to have the same that they have within them. That's why in John 17, the vine, and the, or sorry, 15 in the branches, it says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts, uh, sorry, what's, where am I? Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch in me can bear root by itself. It must remain in the vine. God, the Father, and the Holy Spirit have to remain within each other, and we have to remain within them. If we don't remain in them, then we won't bear fruit. 
And if we don't bear fruit, then we will be of a branch that is cut off because it's useless. If a grape bush or a grape tree or whatever they are, are they trees or bushes? Grapes. Grapes. Vines. Vines. Oh, duh. I know that. Duh. <laughs> Vines. But it's like if when it's dead, it becomes, it renders itself useless. Mm -hmm. When it's no longer producing, it's good for, for uh, kindling. It says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, he can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into a fire and burned. When we read this, it sounds kind of harsh, but hear it through the filter that's not so harsh. This is a really good thing. He's just trying to tell us, like, hey, remain in me. Let's have communion together. Let's be in relationship. Let's get all these nice things. Do you remember any of the identity things that Jesus gives in the in the Father ladder? Friendship, I think, is one of them. Friendship, uh, and like I think, like verbal communication, I think, but that also comes from parents. But if you remain in me, and the, uh, my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. He's telling us these things so that we can have a loving relationship with Him, so that we can experience all of God. Not just a part of God, not just some aspects of God, but all of Him so that we can bear much fruit for the glory of God. My life is a, it should be a walking testimony to bring glory to the Father. And so my job as I'm learning to have a relationship with God is to figure out where am I lacking in relationship with God? Where am I... Where am I having a hard time. Why am I having a hard time asking? And as we go into inner healing, we're going to be diving way deeper into this. We're going to be taking a hard look at it. How do I have relationships with friends? How do I have relationships with myself? How do I have relationships with my parents, with my, with my siblings? Where does this correlate to how I relate to God? Do I only experience God in worship? Or do I only experience God when I read the Bible? Or when nobody's around because I don't like people. Because I just want to have my own personal space with God. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. If you, if you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in His love. I have told you, I have to, this is why He's telling you all this stuff. This is, why, this is the kicker. This is why He's telling us about, hey, don't be a branch that gets thrown in the fire. It's not like, hey, if you don't bear any fruit, you better, I'm going to throw you in the fire. No, it's, hey, hey, be this because of this. I have told you this so that my joy, the God head, three in one, all of my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Lacking in nothing. My joy will be complete when I'm in Him and I'm experiencing all three parts of the Godhead. Not just, well, I like the Holy Spirit, but God, He doesn't like me. He doesn't have time for me. He's way over there. So many times in inner healing, when I ask people to close their eyes and we've gotten past the repentance part or the forgiveness of others part, and I say, can you ask to see the Father? And where, where is the Father? Oh, He's way over there. Why is He way over there? You know, because I don't think He has time for me or He's the ruler and He's the authority, so He's way over there on this big throne, right? Because we hear scriptures, I say, like, he's, God is on the throne. Yes, he's on the throne. But oh, he also is personal and relational, and he likes to 
come into communion with us. He likes to embrace us. Verse 11, I have told you this. I've told you all these things prior. All these other things about my Father and you, you and me, I'm in the Father. Don't bear, bear fruit. Don't, bear, uh, don't be one of the people that don't bear fruit so that your joy may be complete. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. How has He loved us? Unconditionally. Completely. He gives uh, over to, to us without holding back. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are want to experience you all the way. Not just some of the way. My command is this, love each other as I've loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends. That's the next verse, 14. You are my friends. If you do what I command, I no longer call you servants because servant, a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I have learned from my Father, I have made known to you. God in the flesh, in the person of Jesus, everything that He's known from God, everything that He's learned from the Father, He has made it known to us. Does that sound like intimacy? Does that sound like just selflessness? He has made it known to us. You did not choose me. Verse 16 in, in chapter 15 of John. You did not choose me, but I chose you. This is intimacy with God. He chose you. You didn't even choose Him. Even in our dysfunction, when we didn't know Him, He still saw you. It says, when we were still sinners, God loved us. He says, I, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last. Then my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. And how do we love each other? We learn to know what love is because through God, because God is love. And if God is love, we will learn to know what it is to experience love, not just a loving feeling, not just an emotion, but we'll understand what it is to be fully accepted, fully known, fully just lavished with everything, all the identity traits of the Godhead. Teaching, love, nurture, comfort, provision, all of those things. And when we experience that, we will know how to then love one another. Unconditionally. And I'm not there yet. I have to love people that I don't even know. I have to love people that I hate. How do you do that? How do you love them when you hate them? <laughs> That's like an oxymoron. It doesn't really work. How do I do that? Community with God. Sorry, communion with God. I'm in this com community with the Lord where I'm in Him and He is in me. The Holy Spirit lives in me. I get overwhelmed by His love and I realize, like, listen, I can actually have compassion for my accusers. I can actually have compassion for the people that mistreated me. That doesn't mean I got to go be best friends with them and have coffee with them. I'm not saying that. But when you've experienced this love, nothing else matters. Throughout the rest of this month, throughout the rest of this semester, I want you guys to be paying attention to that. Where is my relationship at with the Spirit, with the Holy Spirit? Where is my relationship at with fa the Father God? Where is my relationship at with Jesus? Which one's the easiest? Start there. Why is it the easiest? 
Well, maybe you have the easiest relationship with Jesus because you haven't been burned by a bunch of your friends. Maybe friends is where you found safety. Maybe your siblings is where you found you could actually open up to somebody who would not feel judgment. Or maybe you have a really good relationship with God the Father because you have a great Father, and it's easy for, for you to feel protected by Him. What if you don't have fathers? Then you're going to have to learn how to have a relationship with God the Father. And if you don't, then you also need to surround yourself with good fathers. Steve says, you know how to be a good husband? I'm like, no, I don't know how to be a good husband. I've never been a husband before. Mm -hmm. Well, then surround yourself with good husbands. Get around good fathers. Mm -hmm. You see any examples of good fathers around here? Mm -hmm. Ask them, what is it like to be a good father? Ask them questions. You know? I don't know how to have a relationship with mothers. Well, get around good moms. Lisa's a good mom. Vicky's a good mom. There's good moms around here. And as we've learned last, last week, like from the keys to intimacy, the image we have of ourselves is how we, the image we have of God, how we relate to our, our, our friends and how we relate to ourselves is could, let me rephrase that, could be a reflection of how we relate to God. And I don't want any of my little earthly hiccups to get in the way of my relationship with God because I want my joy to be complete and to be in perfect communion with Him. I want to have more joy. And when I mean joy, I don't mean just a happy feeling. I want to be completely like, like, that's what I used to say all the time. I just want to be happy. I just want to feel happy. And Lisa says, well, happy is fleeting because it's a feeling. Joy is an identity. And that doesn't mean that just be, because you're in joy that you're going to always have a happy look on your face. But you'll be able to experience things differently than you would have in the past. And you'll be able to get back to that joy center way quicker. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. We're going to stop there. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of Refuse Ordinary. We hope you were encouraged, inspired, and even challenged to seek more of who God is and who you are in Him. If you have any questions about the School of Transformation or would like to apply for our next semester, please go to transformationschool.org or send us an email at info at transformationschool.org. See you next time.